Okay, we're looking at the top of this, what seems to be a governor assembly. And you won't believe this, there's these three screws, flathead screws, my absolute favorite. And by favorite, I mean least favorite. You won't believe how easy these screws are just turning. Look at that. Of course, I, I'll be honest, I did break these free off camera, so I thought they would fight me. But all I did, I put my screwdriver in here, tapped the end of the screwdriver with my hammer, a good couple stout taps, and that was it. This thing came, or these screws came right out. So let's take these screws out. Give her a little persuasion. Hopefully nothing comes sprunging out at me. Hmm. Let's try taking these bolts off. Actually, I just learned yesterday from one of my wonderful viewers. Oh, look at that. Again, these look how look how easily that came off. Anyway, I learned from one of my viewers who was kind enough to respond to one of my videos or comment on it. A, uh, a smart ass viewer had criticized my terminology of bolt versus machine screw. And this other fellow looked it up in Machinery's Handbook. A machine screw holds two or more pieces together with one of the pieces having internal threads of its own. And a bolt holds two or more pieces together with the aid of a nut. So these are technically screws, hex head cap screws. I still prefer calling them bolts because that looks like a bolt to me, but you know. Just thought you guys might be interested. Oh wow, look at that, that came right off. That's all there is to it in there, just another bevel gear. And let's see, is it, okay, that moves, nice. So there must be something seized up in the governor because I tried to move this pulley before and it did not rotate. So I got the governor on the bench here. Now, I've been trying to get this gear off, this drive gear, and it's just not having it. There's a, as you can see, there's a pin there, but it must be a press fit from the factory, so maybe it's really just not meant to come out uh, without a fight anyway. So I think I'm just going to drill this pin out, hopefully it's not hardened or anything, and see if we can slide the gear off. Okay, so I drilled out that pin carefully, and it came out very well. Definitely came loose. I don't think I lost anything. Oh, that's why it's all fucked up. All right. I heard some things clanking around. What it was was a uh, eh, really screwed up ball bearing. <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna check the floor, make sure I didn't lose anything. Okay, so I captured what balls I could. I'm missing a couple, but I have the cage, which is the important part. And these are quarter-inch diameter balls, so I can I can buy new ones easily, probably from McMaster or whatever. That's not a big deal. So while I spin it, I'm going to push through this hole with a screwdriver. And Oh yeah, look at that. That comes right out. Let's carefully remove it the rest of the way by hand. There we go. So in this hand here, I'm holding the whole governor weight assembly. And then in this hand, I'm holding the collar that the um, yoke, I'll call it a yoke, I don't know what else you want to call it, of the governor arm would act on. 
you see it's got a thrust bearing in here. Looks like uh looks like a roller or maybe a ball bearing. I can't really see. There's a cage. But you can barely see something round that's rotating in there. This is pretty cool. This is uh for uh an old oil field engine, this is kind of high tech, you know, roller bearings and everything, or ball bearings. So this must be a relatively new engine. Definitely not half breed territory or anything like that. This is this is pretty cool. Look at that. I mean, look at all these stamped metal pieces and Phillips head screws. I I'm surprised to see a Phillips head screw actually. I had, I thought everything this old was all flathead. And look at those uh, dowel locating pins. That's pretty neat. That is pretty freaking cool. But yeah, you see there's the hole in there that I think oil probably drips through and there must be a hole, a through hole that goes here and then lubricates everything. So I'm gonna continue taking this apart. Okay, so I just drifted the pin out with uh, a drift. Now I can take these weights off. I believe, yeah, these weights are symmetrical, or not symmetrical, but they're identical, rather. Okay, I figured it all, all out. This, <laughs> there was a bunch of junk in it, so I couldn't see, but there is a groove cut into that, or broached into that hole to allow oil to come through. So I cleaned, I cleaned this passage all out, and that flows fine. And the last thing I figured out, which I think is pretty cool, so simple but so cool, I was wondering what that pointer was for. But I noticed behind the pointer, see that hole behind the fat part of the pointer? That hole is drilled angled and connects into the main bushing hole there, where the oil is going to be dripped in. So the oil is going to drip out of that hole, collect on the tip of that pointer, then drip onto this, onto the, onto the, uh, whatever you want to call the, the collar, because of that bearing in there. This bearing can't get lubrication with oil just dripping through that this center hole. So this little pointer drips oil into there. So elegant, so simple, super cool. I also I haven't been able to get these rollers to spin, so I'm just going to oil them and heat them and fiddle around with them. I assume they're supposed to spin. They they sure look like it. There's some bushings in here. They look like bronze bushings. Those are nice and tight. They don't have any play. I'm not going to bother messing around with those. I also wanted to to mention something that I think is pretty important. Um, I I got a little more involved in this today than I expected to. I was just going to take this apart assuming I was going to find something rusty, loosen it up, and then put it back on. But that's not exactly the case. So, the point I, I want to tell you is that don't take something apart until you're ready to fully fix it and repair it and rebuild it and do whatever you need to do. If this, for whatever reason, needed machine work, that would have been even more time I would have had it apart. And I I don't want to be working on this right now, however much I enjoy it, and I couldn't wait to just mess around with it a little bit, which is why I'm doing this. I want to finish my Ford Hoe project. Because I've, I've fallen into that trap before where you're excited to take something apart, you rip it all apart, and you have a bunch of pieces and parts everywhere, then you start looking, trying to source new pieces, new seals or gaskets or whatever, you can't find them, and then it just sits, and I still have stuff sitting apart from a long time ago that I haven't gotten to put back together yet, so I don't want this to happen with this engine. Anyway, that's it. I just couldn't wait to take this apart and see what was on the inside. So, thanks for watching everybody. Stay tuned for more. I'll try to get some more work done, done on this soon so you can see what's going on with it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, if you want to see more of these videos. Make sure to give me the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And, as always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. Hey guys, one more thing I forgot to mention to you. 
If you have any parts or information or knowledge about this particular type of engine, please leave a comment, send me a message, let me know. I would love to hear from you. I would love to learn more about this engine. There's a, as you know, there's a couple parts missing off it. And if you happen to have a connecting rod cap, exhaust flange, mechanical oiler, or maybe I think there's a bracket that the oiler goes on to. If you have that, anything, any parts, any knowledge, let me know. I'd be very happy, very grateful to hear from you. And that about sums it up for today. So leave a comment, please, or a suggestion, or hit the like button. And once again, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.